The LA Rams are entering the NFL draft with a need for two things, aside from a lot of players. Rigorous logic and a healthy dose of tough love. Hi, I'm James of Faithful Angelino Sports with a special report on the Los Angeles Rams approach to the 2023 NFL Draft. And if you enjoy talking about the Rams, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. We talk Rams football here almost every single day. So to recap, the Rams have 11 picks in the draft, which begins Thursday at five o'clock West Coast time. Having said that, the vast majority of the picks are day three picks. Once again, they don't have a first-round pick. They haven't had a first-round pick since 2016. As we all know, if you're a longtime Rams fan, they had made a consistent habit of trading away first-round picks, the unknown, for the known quantity. In other words, they would trade first-round picks for Jalen Ramsey. They would trade first-round picks for Matthew Stafford, etc. The Rams approach, if they are lucky, if they play their cards right, maybe they get three immediate starters. If they trade down, possibly four or five. But we gotta note what's going on here with the Rams. They have lost 16 players since the end of the season, going on to other teams, being released. The Rams were, so gener were just way over the cap and needed to make drastic moves. This offseason, for those who need to get caught up, this offseason was phrased by Rams general manager Les Snead as a remodeling, not a rebuilding. Whatever. Semantics. The idea is that if the Rams bite the bullet for this year, accumulating draft picks this year and basically getting super under the cap for next year, the idea is like almost like that so-called V-shaped recovery that we heard during COVID that they just bounce right back up into title contention starting in 2024. Now they're trying to tell you that they're still gonna compete in 2023, but I'm here to tell you, even as a Rams fan, I find that a little hard to believe. So now that we've gotten ourselves caught up, now that we've gotten ourselves caught up, let's talk about round two and round three. Let's talk about the philosophical approaches that the Rams have taken long-term with Les Snead as general manager. Because all the day three picks, that's all just a guesstimation, okay? So let's pick it up from there. What are the Rams' needs? Well, the snarky answer is everything. And in a general sense, I approve of snark, but that line is predictable. The question is not what do they need, it's what do the Rams need the most? I'm going to start with edge rusher and offensive line. Here's why. Football, to me, is a lot like chess. And what is the goal of chess? To protect your king while you go off and kill the other king. In football, the king is your quarterback. If you do not have a king, i.e. a quarterback, you need to do whatever it takes to go land one. A lot of teams, because of that, overspend or overvalue quarterbacks in the first round. The Rams don't have that problem. They have their king. It is Matthew Stafford. So then you're sitting there going, okay, well, what do we do? Do we protect the king or do we go and attack the other king? Well, in my opinion, I think the Rams have to approach edge rusher first for two reasons. One, that second round pick which is going to be high in the second round, is enough to where it could be an impactful immediate starter. Maybe not an all pro as a rookie, but an immediate starter. Meanwhile, the Rams traditionally do not start rookie offensive linemen. Even Logan Bruss, the first pick that they had in last year's draft, didn't start. Now granted, he got injured, but he wasn't going to start anyway. Even the Rams admitted as much. So for that second round pick, no, I do not see the Rams investing in protecting their quarterback. I see the Rams saying we need help to get to the other quarterback. The only uh, edge rusher that they have right now with any sort of numbers whatsoever is Michael Hecht, who is an undrafted free agent. You can't expect consistent production from that, from that position right now. So yeah, I do believe that they go 
to uh, get an immediate contributor at outside edge. After that pick from rounds three, literally to the end of the draft, the logical question becomes for the Rams, it's, two, it's twofold. One, how much does Sean McVay value or believe in his returning offensive lineman? Does he believe, for example, the aforementioned Logan Bruss is ready to play in the NFL? Now, if that's the case, then you start looking at round three, round four, et cetera, and saying, what do we have to do to help the king? What do we do to protect him? If he does believe, McVeigh, if he does believe in the offensive linemen that are returning, that opens the door for a myriad of possibilities within the Rams, which leads to the next logical question. Does Les Snead, the general manager, agree with McVeigh? Because McVeigh came back and he was saying the only way that we're going to win consistently in 2023 is if we just overwhelm everybody with offensive numbers. Or does Les Snead say, okay, I see your point, but we got to stop the ball sometime. And if that's the case, you're looking at a defensive heavy day three. Defensive heavy day three. Because again, they've lost a lot of position. They lost Jalen Ramsey. They lost Leonard Floyd. They lost two nose tackles that were run stuffers in Greg Gaines and Ashawn Robinson. They don't necessarily, they've lost Taylor Rapp, one of their safeties. They don't trust their defensive backfield. Who the heck is playing interior in, the, in linebacker, et cetera, et cetera. So there's a lot of questions to go about. So if neither, by the way, and if neither situation, in neither let me correct myself. In neither situation is quarterback a priority. Any blogger, any journalist who is telling you that the Rams are going to gamble on Matthew Stafford's replacement is fooling themselves and trying to fool you. Don't go there. Don't do it. Now, if the answer to the question about what will the Rams value more, do they value Sean McVay's opinion and say we need more offense, then you're going to wind up looking at offensive skill in rounds three and uh, possibly later on. Because again, the Rams do not start rookie offensive linemen. I think running back is a priority. And trust me, if Zach Charbonnet is available from UCLA, if he's available in the third round, they're gonna take a hard long look at that. Because Charbonnet, in addition to being somebody who consistently uh, moves the ball as a running back, he would fit behind the Rams zone blocking schemes because UCLA runs a zone blocking scheme. And also Zach Charbonnet catches a lot of passes for UCLA. They need that variety that maybe Cam Akers just isn't able to give them. We have to find out. If there is, if Charbonnet or another game changing running back is not available in round three, I would say that they look at two other spots. Maybe a third wide receiver, because you know what you have in Cooper Cup, you're pretty sure you've got quality out of Van Jefferson, but I don't necessarily trust Tutu Atwell or Ben Scourneck. Neither of them claimed the mantle of number three wide receiver in the Rams' 11 personnel sets last year. But I also think tight end would be absolutely ideal. Absolutely ideal. There were two times under McVeigh's stewardship of the Rams where the Rams couldn't block. Now, what did they do? The year after they lost the Super Bowl to the Patriots, they couldn't block anybody. Sean McVay, toward the end of the year, went to 12 personnel. In other words, two tight ends. They need more than Tyler Higbee, who, by the way, is going to be a free agent next year. Yes, they added Hunter Long from Miami in the Jalen Ramsey trade. But don't be surprised if they look tight end in the third round. If the answer, though, is that we need as much defensive help as possible, again, I would expect almost every day three pick to go to defense. Maybe special teams in round seven. Remember, the Rams have lost both their punter, their kicker, and their long snapper. And aside from edge rusher, which we've talked about, I think their priority is probably cornerback and safety. You need somebody to try to fill in for Jalen Ramsey after he was traded away. So who would the Rams take in rounds two and rounds three? Round two, the vast majority of the mock drafts that I have been looking at have them looking at either an edge rusher from Iowa State named Will McDonald IV or from Kansas State, Felix Anudite Ozuma. 
At, uh, there's also a quarterback who's been making the rounds that apparently is uh, possibly a, a choice, Cam Smith out of South Carolina. I wouldn't have a problem with any one of those guys being taken by the Rams in round two. Now, there are multiple picks in round three, two of them. In that case, you're looking again, possibly an edge. There's a guy from uh, Auburn named Derek Hall. A safety, Quan Martin out of Illinois is a possibility. And again, we were talking about tight end, Tucker Kraft out of South Dakota State. After that, the day three picks were again, the Rams have eight picks in day three. The mock drafts that I'm looking at, I'm not gonna name names. I'm simply gonna tell you who gets picked most often in these mock drafts by position. I saw edge rusher named three times. I saw punter named twice. Uh, a couple of centers were named. And other than that, it was just basically all over the map. There were a couple of linemen that were named. Yeah, there were a couple of wide receivers that were named. But again, day three, it's just going to be plugging in the holes and seeing if any one of those players can actually land a regular job for 2024 when the Rams have a full bevy of picks from rounds one to seven. And in addition to that, will be $70 million plus under the salary cap when hopefully they rebuild their team on the fly. I have one more thing that I want to get out of the system, or out of my system, I should say. I mentioned earlier that you shouldn't trust anybody who is claiming that the Rams are looking for an heir apparent to Matthew Stafford. What I mean by that is they still might take a quarterback later in the draft, super late. When they were at the Combine, there were multiple reports that the Rams brass was talking to lower level quarterbacks. That doesn't mean that they think they're going to find the next Tom Brady in a round seven or Brock Purdy in round seven. It simply means that they want somebody who can pick the offense up quickly just in case Matthew Stafford gets injured again because they got nothing out of their backup quarterbacks last year. But that doesn't make that particular quarterback an heir apparent. Finally, I would not trust anything from Chris Trapasso of CBS Sports, who in his mock draft had the Rams taking multiple offensive linemen in rounds two and three. Again, 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 the Rams do not start rookie offensive linemen. It's not a wise investment because that it goes against everything the Rams traditionally do. So if you enjoyed this conversation, and once again, to repeat, I believe that the Rams should focus their energy in the second round on defense, maybe one defensive player and one offensive player in round three, and then on those day three picks, plug as many holes as possible, knowing that they're not going to be game-changing picks. If you enjoyed this conversation, don't forget to subscribe to Faithful Angelinos. We talk Rams football every single day here. Thank you for watching. I'm James. We'll be back tomorrow. Faithful Angelinos is a Kia Corte El Queso production. Take care.